If any man shall keep my word, he shall not taste death forever. Words taken from today's gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear friends, this morning I would like to relate to you a story that was told in the 19th century by a certain French bishop, Louis Gaston de Ségur. Bishop Louis de Ségur was born in the year 1820. He died in 1881. He labored in Paris for the defense and preservation of the faith among Catholic people. He was an ardent preacher as well as an accomplished author, publishing numerous pamphlets against the destructive anti-Catholic teachings of the day. Now, among the many pamphlets he published was one titled, Hell. And in that pamphlet, Bishop de Ségur related a true story which involved his maternal grandfather, a Russian count by the name of Rostopchin. This is the story as told by Bishop de Ségur. It was in Russia, in Moscow, a short time before the great campaign of 1812. My maternal grandfather, Count Rostopchin, the military governor of Moscow under the Tsar Paul I, was a very close friend with a certain Count Orlov, a soldier who was famous for his bravery, but as godless as he was brave. One day, after a fine supper, Count Orloff and one of his friends, the Russian general, whom we shall call Vladimir, who was also a very godless man, engaged in terribly ridiculing religion, especially the teaching of hell. During the course of the impious conversation, Orloff said, and what if by coincidence something would exist? on the other side of the curtain. Now, by the other side of the curtain, Orloff meant if there were a hell. Okay, replied General Vladimir, whichever of the two of us shall who shall depart first, he will come back to give word of it to the other one. Is that agreed? The general asked Orloff. Count Orloff replied, an excellent idea. Bishop Segur then writes that both men gave each other their word of honor that they would not fail in this commitment. Some weeks later, it was reported that Napoleon Bonaparte, the emperor of France, was moving his great armies to strike Russia. The Russian armies were deployed to resist the French the general received orders to leave immediately with several divisions of infantry and cavalry. Now one day, very early in the morning, Bishop de Segur continues, while my grandfather, Count Rostopchin, was dressing, the door of his room brusquely opened. It was Orloff, still wearing his sleeping gown and slippers, his hair on end, with a wild look in his eyes and looking deadly pale. My grandfather cried, Orloff, is that you at this hour? And in those clothes, what is the matter with you? Orloff said, I believe that I'm going mad. I just saw General Vladimir. My grandfather said, General Vladimir, did he come back then? No, continued Count Orloff, who now sat down upon the sofa and buried his head into his two hands. He has not come back, and that is what frightens me. Now my grandfather, Bishop de Segur writes, did not understand what Count Orloff was trying to say. Tell me then, what happened to you? 
Orloff, who had begun sobbing at this point, told his story to my grandfather. Some time ago, General Vladimir and I swore a mutual oath that the first of us who died would come back to tell the other one if there really is something on the other side of the curtain. Well, this morning, hardly a half hour ago, I was calmly in my bed, awake for some time, when suddenly the two curtains surrounding my bed were parted. And there I saw General Vladimir standing upright, pale as a ghost, his right hand on his chest, and saying to me in a loud voice, There is a hell, and I am there. Bishop de Segor then writes, My grandfather calmed Orloff down as best as he could. He began to speak of hallucinations and nightmares and perhaps the possibility that Orloff was still asleep at the time. At length, Bishop de Segur continues his story saying, my grandfather had Orloff taken back to his hotel. But 10 or 12 days after this strange incident, an army messenger brought my grandfather the military governor of Moscow, news of the death of General Vladimir. It was the very morning of the day that Count Orloff had claimed to have seen and heard him. It was the very same hour, in fact, that he had appeared to Orloff in Moscow. The general had been shot through the chest and had fallen instantly dead. And according to the Russian soldier, Count Orloff, General Vladimir came back as he said he would and declared, there is a hell, and I am there. Today, my dear friends, is Passion Sunday. And it is called Passion Sunday because the church begins on this day to make the sufferings of Christ her chief thought. The church, then, would have us today withdraw our minds and hearts from the things of the world and to the events that will unfold during Holy Week, that is to say, the passion and death of Christ. In his book, The Passion and Death of Jesus Christ, St. Alphonsus de Liguori vividly describes the sufferings and torments of our Lord and how our divine Savior, he says, freely chose to suffer such cruelties and pains on account of the love and affection that he bore and still bears towards all men. This saint goes on to write, Miserable had we been if Jesus Christ had not died for us. We should have all, he said, we should have all been imprisoned in hell. For us then, St. Alphonsus says, who have deserved hell, it is a great motive to love Jesus Christ and to think that by his death he has delivered us from this hell by pouring forth his blood. Let us then, St. Alphonsus writes, take a passing glance at the pains of hell where at this hour are so many wretched souls. O miserable beings, St. Alphonsus writes, there they are sunk in a sea of fire where they endure ceaseless agony. Since in this fire they experience all kinds of pain. There, he says, they are given into the hands of demons 
who full of fury are busied only in tormenting these miserable condemned ones for all eternity. There still more than by the fire and the other tortures, St. Alphonsus de Liguori says, are the souls in hell tormented by a remorse of conscience, recollecting the sins of their life, which were the cause of their damnation. But there they see, he says, the way of escape from this abyss of torments forever closed. They are forever excluded from heaven. But what most afflicts them, he says, and what constitutes their hell is to see themselves abandoned by God. For on earth they would not let God save them. And now they are condemned to be unable evermore to love him. But only to look upon themselves with hatred and madness. It was to save men from these terrible torments of hell. It was to save men that our divine Savior came into this world and endured, as it were, the very sufferings of hell on the cross. That is to say, to endure the excruciating, intense, burning pains of his body caused by the scourging the crown of thorns, and the nails that were pierced through his hands and feet, which torments caused, as I said, an intense burning pain throughout his whole body. And that terrible abandonment of his soul by God, that abandonment which caused him to cry out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus Christ, our good Savior, loves us. He loves each and every one of us with a special love. And he desires our eternal happiness with an infinite desire. But it is men, it is men who freely choose to turn away from him. It is men who freely choose to reject him, to not believe in him, nor to love him by not keeping his commandments. And thus, the cause of eternal damnation, my dear friends, is not God, but the willful and deliberate mortal sins of men. Instead of loving God, instead of keeping his commandments of charity and purity, People choose to love some other created thing in his place. People choose to love other people more than God. They choose to love some material thing more than God. And God help us, they choose to love impurity more than God. And the consequence of just one mortal sin unrepented is the eternal torments of hell. Despite what people in the world say and do, despite what even some Catholic people say and do, there is a hell. And people go there. And they go there because they are not afraid of going there. Please, my dear friends, take to heart the reality of hell and have a holy fear of going there. Do this now by taking mortal sin seriously. If God the Father required his only begotten Son to die the most painful and bloody death upon the cross for our sins... And if he punishes with the eternity of hell 
those who commit mortal sin and do not repent, then make no mistake about it, God takes mortal sin very seriously. And hence, we must do everything possible. We must make every sacrifice necessary to preserve the life of sanctifying grace in our souls. Go to confession often. Receive Holy Communion with devotion. Remove the occasions of mortal sin from your homes and your lives, especially those which offend against purity. Be truly sorry for your sins, even as you forgive those who have offended you. Confident in the love and mercy of the Sacred Heart, never let a day go by without loving and honoring Our Lady. We cannot say it enough. We can never say it enough. Pray the Rosary every day. You make time for so many other things. Make her daily rosary a priority in your lives. Honor her each day. Love her each day by praying her rosary. Confident. Mindful of the words of the Holy Ghost, which he spoke of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Scripture. He that hearkeneth to me shall not be confounded, and they that work by me shall not sin. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.